Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today I'm going to give you a quick tip on using the range mask. Now, of course, the range mask in Lightroom is in the brush, the radial filter, and the graduated filter. And I'm going to demonstrate this tip using the graduated filter, but what I'm going to show you applies to the radial filter and brush as well. Now, let's just say I want to add a graduated filter to this image, specifically to the sky, because the sky is kind of blah. So I'm going to go down here towards the bottom and I'm just going to draw down. Now you can see I have exposure all the way down right now. So that's giving me a good indication of what I'm affecting. And I want it to be perfectly straight. So I'm going to hold the shift key down when I do this so that I have a perfectly straight graduated filter. Now I'm going to reset exposure because we don't want that. But what I do want to do is I just want to, you know, darken the sky a little bit. I'm going to add some contrast. We're going to jump down, I think, to dehaze. We'll add some dehaze, just a little bit. And some clarity, texture, maybe a little saturation. So I affected the sky quite a bit. But you'll also notice I affected the hills in the background as well. As you can see, if I just hover over the pin, you can see where the red overlay is. That's everywhere I'm affecting. And I don't want to affect those uh, hills in the back. Here's a before after. There's before, there's after. So what I could do is I could add a range mask. Now there's two different kinds. I'm going to add a luminance range mask. And I'm going to get the eyedropper and I'm just going to click on the blue sky. And you could see when I do that, that it removes it from the hills. And it actually removed it a little bit from the sky as well. There's before and there's after. Now you probably know that if you check this little box, show luminance mask, it will give this kind of weird overlay showing where you're affecting. You can see it's mostly affecting the sky, but it is affecting other areas slightly where I don't want it to affect. The tip I want to show you is instead of clicking that box, what I prefer to do is I hold in the Alt Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac. And then I'll go to the smoothness slider and when I click you'll see you get a, a more stark graphic representation of what's being affected. Where it's bright, that's being affected. Where it's dark, it's not being affected. And if I take smoothness and move it to left, you can see that I could pretty much relegate it completely to the sky. And if I go to the range, same thing with keeping that um, Alt Option key in, I could kind of you know balance it out so it affects more of the sky, less of the hills and maybe right around there. So now you'll see that it's affecting pretty much just the sky. A little bit of the hills maybe over in here, but not that bad. And you can see just as I move exposure to give you an idea. Now I'll get rid of that for now. This also works if you use uh, the uh, color mask as well. Now I'm gonna lay down another one. I'm gonna hold in that uh, shift key again so it goes perfectly straight. Move it right down a little bit. All right, we'll reset that, and the same thing. We're gonna add contrast, maybe make the highlights a little brighter, that, I don't know, we're just moving, I'm moving stuff around. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, that's what I like. Now I'll go to the range mask again, and this time we'll add a color mask. Same thing, I'll get the dropper, I'll click on like the blue sky, like right, maybe there. All right, so it removed it again from uh, the hills, but it's not affecting the sky as much as when I first set it up. Again, I could hold that Alt Option key in, go to the Amount slider, and you could see I get that same kind of graphical representation. So I could remove it completely from the hills. It's also being removed a little bit from some of the clouds, but that at least gets you an idea. In this case, for this image, I think the Luminance mask works better, and that helps you probably compare the two a little more equally to know which one of those two types of range masks will work best on a specific image. And just remember, it's just as simple as holding that Alt Option key in when you're adjusting the sliders that are in the masks. And then you'll be able to really see what you're affecting. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.